thundering over your sky is a huge aircraft. But this one isn't carrying nuclear weapons or earth-shattering bombs. But rather, it's AA-123 carrying tourists on their way to Hawaii. Boeing has a slew of different aircraft that could easily fit the profile of their next passenger plane, but none is more obvious than the B-52. But it does raise many questions. How many passengers would it fit on board? What would it be like to fly? And is any of this even a good idea? The answers, as always, will surprise you. Today, let's get on board the Boeing B-52 passenger version. Boeing needs to bring a new large aircraft to the market. With delays to the Boeing 777X program and the 747 production shutting down, maybe it's time that they looked forward for their next aircraft design. Or rather, backward. Because Boeing already built a plane that could be reformatted into a passenger plane, the Boeing B-52 Stratofortress. And it just makes sense. It can carry a ton of weight, it can go an incredible long range, making it perfect for those long-haul international flights, and it flies higher than most commercial traffic, missing most turbulence. But what I really want to know is, what would it be like to fly, and just how many passengers can we cram on board? Now, I have to explain that I am no mathematician. I do videos about aeroplanes on the internet. So the maths that you're about to see might have some mistakes, but I trust that the people in the comments will be very nice when they correct me. We can start by looking at the carrying capacity of the aircraft. The B-52 has a carrying capacity of 31,500 kilograms. If we take the average person, which is 60 kilos in Asia, or perhaps more realistically, 80 kilograms in America, then we can roughly fit on 400 passengers. And that's to a range of 8,816 nautical miles, which places it easily within range of most of the world. Just shy of the Airbus A350 ultra long range with a range of 9,700 nautical miles. So already your ears should have perked up. However, how would they fit all on board? Let me explain. You see, it gets a little bit more tricky as you might have realized by now that the B-52 is awfully thin. If we take the metric measurements of the aircraft, the B-52H is 48.5 meters long, but only has a body width of 2.8 meters. This is tiny, but it's not the smallest, with the Concorde only having a width of 2.6 meters. So we know that airlines have been built with these dimensions before. The Boeing 737, the most popular commercial plane ever made, has a width of 3.54 meters, which they fit six seats and an aisle inside. So using that as our baseline, we can roughly estimate that a comfy seat is 50 centimeters wide and the aisle roughly about the same. So using the fuselage of 2.8 meters and divide it up, we can get four seats across with an aisle in the middle in a 2-2 configuration, which is admittedly a little bit more than I was expecting. However, the cabin length is a bit trickier to figure this out. With a length of 48.5 meters, we can remove the cockpit of say five to six meters. Side note, the original cockpit of the B-52 takes up a ton of real estate. It has two levels and around 10 meters of space. So looking at what we can cut, we can get rid of the electronic warfare officers and the navigators on board. So I'm pretty comfortable to say losing half the top deck and the entire bottom deck of the cockpit. With 43 meters or so of cabin length left, we can also remove a few meters for door sections and toilets, giving us around 35 meters left for passenger seats. At 80 centimeters of pitch per seat, that gives us 44 rows of economy, give or take a few. But we're not done yet. With a height of 12 meters, we could easily fit in two decks on board nearly all the way down the cabin. I'm not entirely sure where the stairs would go, but let's just imagine that in this scenario that we would have ladders or some sort of dual access boarding. Now, before we come to the final number, we should also consider those large mid-fuselage wheel wells. They're huge and designed to carry a lot of weight and take up a large chunk of the plane. 
So with 44 rows at four seats across, we have 176 passengers on each deck for a total of 350. We might lose 50 of those seats to those big wheel wells, and if we want cargo room for luggage on board, there'll probably be another 50 on the lower deck. But I'd be very comfortable suggesting that this plane could carry around 250 to 300 passengers in an all economy configuration. So this plane can carry the weight and it has enough capacity for passengers. Would it actually make sense to do it? Now you might be thinking I'm totally insane in this video that Nick has finally lost the plot with his mad dash to try and make so many Christmas themed videos. But there's actually a historical precedent. A Soviet one. Yes, that's right, turning a long range bomber aircraft into a commercial plane has been done before and it was actually the USSR that perfected the art of recycling with their Tupolev Tu-114 based on the Tupolev Tu-95 strategic bomber nicknamed the Bear. This plane, the Tu-114, could carry 224 passengers in a maximum carriage configuration, although a more usual number for long distance was around 170 passengers, which meant that the planes had plenty of room for such luxuries as sleeping berths and even a dining lounge in the upper class cabin. And this plane wasn't slow either, with its four powerful turboprops it could fly as fast as a modern airliner today using less fuel, setting the record for the quickest propeller aircraft ever built. But it wasn't without its shortcomings however, like being too tall for airports and loud as heck. With people in the dining cabin expecting to have their cutlery rattle with noise up to 100 decibels. So that just leaves us with this very possible Boeing B-52 passenger plane idea and a question for Boeing, oh, what are you waiting for? Well, not to be a downer, but there are some major flaws. Let's start with passenger comfort. Throughout this video, I've kind of skipped over the fact that the cabin of the B-52 would be cold, unforgiving, and unpressurized. Bombs don't need heaters, entertainment, luggage, compartments, food or beverages, or even people to serve them, as well as the massive safety requirements the FAA needs airframe builders in order to do so to even look at a commercial airport. And that's a great point. The B-52 isn't optimal for passenger operations at airports. It would require multiple ways to board thanks to that middle wheel well, and stairs would have a hard time reaching up to the upper decks, and you can imagine the build to convert over existing airframes. Yikes. It wouldn't really have any advantages over the usual customer planes, and the numbers don't make much sense when you look at the economics. The only way that I could see these entering commercial operations is if the US military retired the B-52 and gave away the airframes to commercial operators. After all, they're over 50 years old, right? They should be retiring these old bombers pretty soon. Forgive me, before recording, I didn't actually look up its retirement age, let me guess. 2025, 2030, oh. 2050 is the retirement age for this aircraft. Well, I'm sure the merged Boeing and Airbus company would have already been retiring their 777X Neos by then. <laughs> what do you think? Let us know in the comments. And if you like this video, I suggest you check out the Boeing cargo plane video or the one where we turned the AN-225 into a passenger plane. Thanks for watching.